Hello everyone and welcome back for the back nine of round number one at the 2024 Sun King presents the Throwdown the Mountain 12. We're at the Olympus course and we've got sweet action coming at you with Charlie Goodpasture celebrating a birthday, Thomas Gilbert who's on the mic again, Cole Wareheim, and then rounding up the card, Sullivan Tipton. Pretty solid front nine that we saw, Thomas you were five under. That was only really bested by one person in Clay Harvey. So off to a pretty good start. Now we head to the back, and things don't really get any easier, do they? No, not too much. Uh, there's a couple holes on the back nine that you really want to get. There's a stretch kind of like 13 through 15 that you really need to get. Uh, but this hole is not one of those holes. This is a very difficult par three on the spine the entire way and basket perched up on the hillside. The three most difficult holes on the course are on the back. They're 16, 10, and 18 in that order. Yeah, Charlie very close, but just catches that tree and actually is going to kick him down the hill a little ways on the right side. I am hanging on the right side to start and just catch some stuff and drop down as well. You have to be thankful at that point. It just didn't give you a nasty kick. Oh, yes, absolutely. Sully with the saucy forehand play, sneaks to the side, not quite. Almost around that final tree. That would have checked up beautifully if it could have gotten around. And Cole rounds out our card. He's struggled. A lot of that coming from one particular hole. He struggled back on hole number four. Mm -hmm. But looking to get his first birdie and get things going. Sully not his best effort there, but he, he gets onto the top shelf. He's going to have probably Circle's Edge look to try to save his par. And a little bit overcommitted there from Charlie. Kind of cut rolls out to about that, 40 feet as well. Yeah, that puts you in a danger zone because that gives you one of those putts where you're definitely thinking about the backdrop behind the pin. Mm -hmm. Cole will give you a nice little lofty bid that will just hopefully sit and nestle right beside the basket. I'm going to try to do the same here. Yeah, not mad at that effort at all. Ten plays is the second most difficult hole on the course. And it's for putts like these, this is an absolute death putt. He needs to hit this if he wants to be safe. Ooh. Oh, no. There you see it. Doing him dirty. Rolls all the way back past the red basket and curls up, having to move the group out of the way. Never really want to see that happen to anybody on the course. No, that 40-footer that just turned into a 65 or 70-footer. Yeah, it doesn't even give it a thought. Just lays it up underneath, which is a smart but unfortunate thing to happen for Charlie. I've seen a couple of putting woes out of Sullivan, but not oh, here on not 10. Bad. That was a great putt. Hit the chains nice and hard. Looked very confident. And Cole sneaking it over once again. I think he's just trying to find a little bit of confidence himself. Either that or he went out and greased all the basket rims. And right. He's, and as soon as he hits it, it, it just up. still slides up and in. That's right. Some trickery by the uh, Floridian. Charlie going to drop back even with that double bogey. Unfortunate there. Big thanks to our friends over at Grip for all the support here, especially of the coverage for our Throw Down the Mountain. Here we are on hole number 11. Yeah, tricky shot here. This is a new tee pad from the traditional Throw Down the Mountain layout. Um, FPO basket you can see there, and then we head up to the left. It's gonna be just over top of this little ridge here on the down slope. Can make it a little bit tricky to uh, play the speed control. Uh, just throw it a little bit too low, barely got over that hillside, and I'm going to check up about probably 50 feet short of where you would really want your shot to be. What an interesting play here by Sully. Yeah, I loved this play from Sully, just taking his Hellfire, cranking it over, and letting it just slowly flex out, and gets the distance control almost spot on. Yeah, just the fact that he's going with a forehand, which seems counterintuitive, right? You're trying to get down the gap, 
and then go up to the left. But he's he's not concerned about that distance. He's more concerned about just the accuracy of his of his placement. Yes, for sure. Which is a good play. Cole doing the same, throwing his um, little approach disc there, and just making sure he's got the distance correct. Because then you have a straight look up this hill to the basket, and how close you are doesn't really matter too much. This is a more subtle change that we've seen as the chess.com layout came into existence. This basket used to kind of just be at the top of the hill, and if you got there, you were pretty much right at the basket. It's been pushed back uh, in kind of a longer position as opposed to years uh, previous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cole right there would have been probably 20 feet, but now he's got about a 40-foot look down at the chess.com basket or the Olympus basket that they've now put in. Sully just has a tricky angle and keeps it a little bit too wide. He's going to be just in front of Cole in a very similar spot. Yeah, that was my attempt to capture Charlie's throw. He, he got up and threw pretty quickly there to get himself. I think, again, some frustrations have set in. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite in position, and he was ready to throw, apparently. You have to be so careful with your angle here, right? Absolutely, yeah. I'm trying to make sure to get it to the ground quick and just try to nestle up because that slope behind the basket can take the disc really quick. Yeah. There we go, Cole. No grease needed for that putt. That was hearted. I believe that's his first birdie of the round. Trying to chip away at the over par strokes he's collected. Mm-hmm. One of the most difficult things to do, honestly, when you're playing. It's easy to rack them up when you're playing well, but to scramble them and claw them back is so much more difficult. Sully, unfortunately, not going to be able to claw that one back. He just chains out right. I tap in as Charlie. He's went a bit long and has this obstructed look. I just didn't really look comfortable on that putt and sends it over the top. Sounds like we got Bob the Builder next door or whatever. There's some yes, construction some... of some kind going on, so you're going to hear constant hammering yeah. possibly on this hole and then maybe even the next one as well. Yeah, it sounded like they were putting a roof together or something crazy like that. And we'll head over to hole number 12. The one hole on the course where the MPO basket is shorter than the FPO basket? Yes, I believe that is correct. Um, a really fun hole, 563 feet, but reachable with almost any disc in your bag. You're gonna see the common play being a forehand though, which you actually need all the power on your forehand to get to. Cole here ripping out his Quasar, I believe, and gets a nice little flex on it and coming up. Oh man, digs a little bit. He wants that one or two skips closer to the basket, but that is going to leave him a good look. Here I'm trying to do the same thing, flatten a little bit the height of the flight. Is that the same driver we saw back on two? That was, yeah. It flies very, very different for me forehand and backhand. Sully just slips a little bit on the tee pad there. He he had a little bit of traction problems throughout the round, but sends this one up high, and it's going to be it's gonna be a really bad spot, Terry. Yeah, that's going to be frustrating because this feels like such a bread and butter shot for him. I know. And Charlie going backhand. Yeah, I believe this is just a mid from Charlie. Just smoothing it out, letting the turn just glide down the hill. And he is actually going to be real nice, just a little bit past Cole. Yeah, looks to be closest to the pin and tucked up on this right side. Sullivan's trying to fight out. Yeah, and he actually threw a little little shot through there and, and will give himself probably about a 25-foot look. Mm. And Cole hoping to dial it up from the last hole, but Porch just comes up a little bit short, but right on line. Almost identical distance for Charlie. So if he can chip away at the bogey he just picked up on the previous. 
just a little bit off his mark there. And the putts we've seen from you so far today, that would lead me to think this is yours all day. Oh, because it is. Okay, okay. I mean, really, the way your putting stroke has looked, there probably was very little doubt in your mind that that was going to go in. Oh, no, yeah. My putting stroke felt really good today. I, I felt like I had a good chance to make anything I was looking at. So that is an amazing feeling to have on the disc golf course. A solid save for Sully after fighting through that right side. Yeah, definitely a good scramble there from Sully. And Charlie is going to leave this little cleanup half in for par. He'll tap in and we'll tap out for a quick commercial. What are we trying to do here on 13? 13 is one of the actual kind of original throw down the mountain shots. Uh, we play this par four. You want to get up and to the right here, somewhere on this ridge. And then you have this little tunnel on the back side of the hole to this basket right on the cliffside edge. Four hands, the common play. This is real what? sneaky. Going through about a two foot gap. Uh, but that is going to be, Get that on close up there. <laughs> oh yeah, doing a little bragging of uh, how lucky I got on that shot. That, I don't think you could do it again. Let's put it that way. No, I give you 10 more so. tries. I don't think you're finding that same gap. Cole, unfortunately overcorrected on my mistake and went inside. That's going to be a tricky shot. Sully is looking to dial up a gem right here. Gets a great skip to the right and that is ideal. Early, uh, just needs to beat that tree and kicks him out down the left side, which is going to be an interesting approach. Ooh, punches it. Oh man, so close. It sucks that there's not a true fairway on this hole. And like, I threw a bad tee shot, but you just got to get so lucky. <laughs> like, yeah. you got to just get so lucky at some point. The first, the second, yeah. third shot. There's got to be just like a lot of. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. analysis there by Charlie, and I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't mind seeing like one or two select trees come out of this hole, yeah. and I know you I know you can't put them back once you take them out, and we're going to see how things play out, but I, I, would, I would be all in favor for just a couple of the trees to come out on this one. I would definitely agree, Terry. They think just on that left side, it, it's just jail. You're seeing a lot of forehand rollers, as me and Cole are going to be demonstrating here. And that's just to make the disc skinny, honestly, because the trees are so hard to actually navigate through with an air shot. It seems like the, the play is to get to the right as, as much as you can over yeah, here, right here by, by where by we Sully. see Sullivan. That's kind of the play. That's the ideal place to get to. Yeah. Um, because everything else is so tight and congested, but just puts a real premium on getting over to that right side. Mm-hmm. Charlie still got a few tiny gaps to mess with. He's trying to throw a baby flex, but yeah, skips up to just inside circle, I believe. Is it in, Terry? I don't know, but you've got a straddle look, which most of yours haven't quite been. What? Another <laughs> one. Damn. Yeah. That's got to feel so good, as you were saying. Absolutely, yeah. Just the feeling of looking at a basket and having confidence of it hitting the chains. It can go on and off, but I'm glad it's on today. Well, Cole has some confidence there. Yeah. Good save for par. Another outside circle putt for Cole. That's a nice couple in the last few holes. Mm. Charlie just in a spot he didn't really like. Couldn't really get comfortable, but that's one you really want to make. That's going to drop him another stroke and unfortunately move himself to two over par. And Sully, I think, 
barring disaster, there we go. Is Damn. Gonna get himself back to even, which is not where you want to be, but a good start to hopefully finishing it strong. Yeah, uh, picking up a birdie there, though, is uh, incredibly impressive as we head over to the first of two back-to-back -back par fives. Yeah, these par five here, you want to get up on the shelf and then throw a nice shot. Being mindful of this OB that runs all the way down the left side, and then the basket's going to be tucked here on the right in this little cluster of trees. A very eagleable hole, I may add. Here, just throw in a nice little shot up onto the ridge. Get a couple good skips, and yeah. Gonna be leaving myself just past the ditch, which can be tricky if you find yourself in that area. Now, if you guys remember, this was a pond, so to speak, during chess.com, and it was. it was actually all marked as casual OB, and uh, all sorts of disaster was happening <laughs> down there. So that's all, so to speak, dried up and uh, isn't quite as daunting as it once was. Yeah, Cole pulling it, but he, he sneaks through and actually is going to be in a pretty decent spot. Charlie liked that line so much, he's going to go for it too. And probably very similar result. Charlie's going to get aggressive, goes with the roller. Oh, and it pops up on him. Come on, dude. I can't catch a break right now. Ah! That was ridiculous. <laughs> wow, and so Charlie doesn't have a chance for it to curl back at all and ultimately is going to go out of bounds. He'll Cole, get some good distance out of it. He did, yeah. Cole's going to go with the forehand, a little bit safer route, fading away from the OB the entire way, so that's nice. Sully... Obviously, a forehand specialist going to be doing the same thing. Going right towards where the pin was right there, you can see for chess.com, but we are playing to the blue long, so he is going to like that shot. Going to leave him a nice, easy approach. And here I am in a good position, so I'm going to get aggressive, throw the roller, with a nice flippy disc, but flips a bit too much and actually catches the sawgrass. Plenty of power. Charlie retrieves his disc and then goes over to the this side. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, that's good. Charlie's. I love how there's two layouts on our. That's like a. That's good. Uh, yeah, a yeah, frustrating yeah, he was sure. <laughs> a little frustrated. He wasn't quite paying full attention, and and yeah, you called it like that was the basket that was played at chess.com. But as with every other basket, the previous thirteen, you guys played to the blue basket on every hole on this course, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, being maybe a little frustrated from the OB shot, I made the little mental error of not thinking about which basket to throw to. Yeah. So, yeah, that's gonna be. Uh, you're going to have to bounce back from that somehow as Sully almost banks it. Yeah, that would have been a nice little eagle bid. I believe that's Charlie throwing up just real quick, stepping up and tossing it. I came up shorter than I thought, but got a nice little straddle out here to the left, see if I can make magic happen again. Well, with these long legs of yours. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Terry, just unreal today. Like, not even really a good look at the basket, but managed to shape it in there. Yeah, now you're eight under as we see a follow-up, a really solid putt there by Cole as well. Mm -hmm. Th that's still going to keep him 10 back of you, even with that incredible putt. Yeah, I and liked things it. are rolling. I liked it on uh, both this hole and the last. Cole steps up and bangs a nice putt after, after mine. I was glad to see that. And Sully, easy birdie after those great two drives that he had. And you guys are going to make your way up the hill. Big thanks to our friends over at Swarm. We'll talk about more than uh, more about them in a minute, but go ahead on this par five. Yep, hole number fifteen, par five. We're actually going to be playing to the shorter basket here. Um, 
really a very attackable hole. This is one you definitely want to get an eagle on. You can kind of decide how much you want to bite off on this tee, and that can really dictate how aggressive you can be on this second shot. Sully playing a nice forehand, letting the ground play really get him far up there. Yeah, good looking shot. And mind you, uh, I thought we had a little bit of a backup. So I, I went to use the, uh, the the men's restroom and you had teed off, not necessarily realizing that uh, we weren't there and ready to go. And well, yes, and the, uh, the play keeps going on. It's it's It sure does. And here's a little uh, tidbit for you guys. If you imagine my disc being thrown right here, it'll look very similar. Starting in the middle, turning, turning, and catches the right side rough. So All right, so you, so Charlie matches your shot. effort. Okay, absolutely. Well, we'll catch up with you the rest of the hole. But I remember coming back, and then you're like, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> uh, again, it uh, it is what it is. Right out the middle for Charlie. Very nice. I am in a slightly worse spot and trying to just punch out somehow. <laughs> well, I mean, I good forward out. progress. Yeah, after it does. that sounded like one or two tree hits, and they sounded hefty. Yeah, I think so I you still the made trunk, good progress. Chunk of one, trying to be a little more on that left side, but definitely can't be mad at how far it got up. Sully is leaking, and and. We're all under the assumption that's out, and mm -hmm. somehow it stays in. I think it we'll does. show you just how close, but 50 -50. we're all assuming that he's out of bounds at that point. And a very nice shot by Cole, using that distance off the tee to his advantage, and he's going to be having a long look for his eagle bid. Mm, man, okay. a little more distance. Forgot how uphill the hole was, but I got a long look. I'm uh, feeling good about it. Yeah, you've made some pretty solid putts. Speaking of looks, I wanted to say thanks to Swarm Digital Marketing. We talked about them. They offer web design, development, and maintenance services. As we're seeing just how close he's literally straddling the line. <laughs> but big thanks to our friends over at Swarm. Uh, interestingly... They told me 88% of online consumers won't return to a website following a bad experience. So Swarm can help you out. You can find a link in the description below as Sullivan trying to take advantage. Wow, almost chucks it in for the eagle anyways. Very nice shot. So you're looking to keep the putter rolling, trying to get to 9 under mm -hmm. with a less than ideal tee shot. Oh, oh you got to want it. Terry, I, I wanted it so bad. I thought that looked good, but again, uphill just deceived me a little bit. Came up just short. Oh, and it got cold too. Man, those look literally right playing follow the leader at that point. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah, I joked him a little bit, like, oh, couldn't do it because I didn't show you the line this time. But no, uh, yeah, we both come up a little bit short and. Uh, his, luckily, is still going to be a birdie. Yeah, that feels like you're just giving one away to the entire division by not walking away with at least a birdie here. Mm -hmm. So Cole will, will tap in, and you're left out of the party. Mm -hmm. Brought back by popular demand. Z-Lite Plastic from Discraft. Disc that you already know and love, now available in lighter weights. This plastic is perfect for players with lower arm speeds as well as beginners. They can also be a great complement to the regular weight version of a disc that's already in your bag. z -Lite. More distance with less effort. And we'll head over to hole number 16, one of my favorites on the course. Mm -hmm. So you can see the drone flight here going through that left side, flexing back to the right. That is the shape you're going to see most common on this hole. And then you got to go up to this hill and then bite back to the right once again. Tucked in right here in the shade. Uh, beautiful par four. Also the third most difficult hole in the course. Absolutely. Yeah, you have this OB running on the right side the entire way. Right. Sully finds 
himself short of that OP, uh, but a little bit farther back than you probably find ideal. Oh, this could be trouble. And not committing to that turn out of the hand, and he's going to fade into the left side. Tricky shot, he's just going to probably have to pitch out in some way. Yeah, there is no shortcut through the left side. Charlie playing nice Anheuser. Sure. Flying oh, all is, the way. That, was that, slow bleed. That, was that is beautiful. Bleed. Great shot by Good Pasture. And I take this right side. I like just kind of punching it hard. Oh, straight <laughs> Yeah, you punched it hard all right. Yeah, that's not going to fight back enough, and no. you're going to be out of bounds. What a, you, I'll admit, I don't see many pe people going up the right side. W why is that? So, Terry, my mistake usually is early releasing a disc. I almost never grip lock it, and I uh, chose the wrong time to grip lock it and just pulled it straight right. Go be maybe 200 feet off the tee pad. Yeah, and w we saw that. It wasn't <laughs> enough commitment that came out of Cole's. Yeah. And so that would leave you on the short side. So I understand that. But, yeah, for you to pull over to the right, that's trouble. Mm -hmm. Solid approach there by Sullivan. believe that just the first forehand we've seen by Charlie today. Yeah. I know he's struggling with some shoulder injury. He said that's been the case since chess.com. So he's been really reserved to go with any forehands, but... That shot is one that calls for it, for sure. It really is, as Cole's going to pitch out. And now he's just looking to get up and down and possibly walk away with the par as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when he sneaks through yeah. the high stuff and actually gives himself a pretty decent look at the basket. Thought he had too much height, but it doesn't connect with any branches, so he's okay. This is your fourth. Oh, and I am. Oh, what did you do? Leaking shots left and right. Or I guess right on this hole. <laughs> but um, yeah, very much in a very bad position there. Just had a wide open shot and, and let it go on all Heiser. Charlie not doing himself any favors there either. Catches one of the early trees and is just going to have to have to pitch up to the basket. Man, after such a beautiful tee shot, mm -hmm. to not be walking away from here with a birdie, that's going to feel like a, a gut punch. Mm -hmm. Bogey? Uh, I was hoping, but just too obstructed there. That's Charlie? A, yeah. Very disappointing to be walking away with the bogey. And I believe Sully is... Looking his chops, looking straight for another birdie. You have a little left on this, but that's in for double. Yeah, uh, that really hurt, especially after going such a hot streak in the last couple holes. Pull, cleaning up a nice par, scrambling out of that left side. Yeah, really, that's the best you could ask for after the tee shot that he, you know, put into the left side. Par feels perfectly fine. And Sully trying to pick up what would be his third birdie in a row. And yeah, very nice there by Sully picking up the birdie. He's uh, definitely fought back really nicely over those last couple holes. Big thanks to all my Patreon subscribers and supporters. As we're here at the Throwdown the Mound, a little lighter this year because chess.com, of course, uh, you know, had so much shine and polish on it earlier. But now, one of the things I love is we're seeing hole 17 in the original short position. We're not playing to the big, long, extended par 4 that you guys saw during chess.com. I mean, this is, I don't know, I love this. Not maybe because I'm a short thrower, but man, 17 was such a slog during mm -hmm. chess.com and yeah. now you're stepping up thinking man i should really pick up this birdie it's less than 160 feet absolutely and i think it's a good test for us players we've thrown so many hard aggressive shots and it's like okay the basket's right in front of you just put it up there it's 150 feet yeah do you have do you have that finesse can you pull back just the right amount mm-hmm 
And this is also one of the things about this hole. It, it is on the hillside, so you go, if you just go past it a little bit with too much speed, you can easily crest and start falling down the other side. Little standstill forehand. Anything you just did on your upshot in the last hole, dude. True, very true. I did not give it the commitment that Anheuser release is required for that shot. Here, I got, <laughs> got stuff in the way, but I'm still trying to make it, Terry. Yeah, it, that isn't the birdie bid or the birdie look you want on a 150-footer. <laughs> no, you need to be right beside it. And so Charlie uh, does get that okay. to sit. Wow, so we've got three pars and only uh, Sully, sorry, mm -hmm. with the left, uh, the, the look at birdie that yeah. remains. He showed you how it's done. Just a nice touchy forehand up there, backhand, whatever you want, honestly. This is definitely one that you, you feel bad missing. Third easiest hole on the course. And Tipton will tap in and pick up the lone birdie. So not overly impressive here by our final feature card of the day. As we'll scurry off to hole number 18. Yeah, and here we go. The final hole on throw down the mountain. This is one where it is absolutely rings true. You need to throw down on this shot, forehand or backhand. Forehands you'll see most commonly on this right side, backhands on the left. And then up we go to the top of this clip and a nice little basket perch right there in the middle of the green. Truly one of the most iconic holes in all of modern day disc golf. Absolutely, yeah. Sully, he's got this shot on lock. That is a bread and butter forehand for him. And gets a little bit of roll, but... Uh, oh, yeah. So that was a cool little feature on this hole. The, uh, the spotter had a radio up sitting on the top. You can see it there on the tee pad. As cool as... Oh, that's early. He needs to go fast. <laughs> you can see... Um, Even getting the, the commentary. Reactions. And there's the uh, walkie-talkie that was delivering the messages. Some good, some not so good. Charlie? Okay, yep. Fighting back out of that little Anheuser release. And that is going to leave himself close to the OB line, but very, very nice shot. I'd love to know if you guys like hole 17 that we just played back in the short position, or would you rather see it in the long? Put that in the comments. And let's hear what is called up to the top. <laughs> and Cole is just playing for position, definitely not trying to get it up onto the green, so he's going to play to that spot. Yeah, really tough drop zone shot there, and here I need to get up to the top of the green. Right now, we're kind of looking at scores and seeing that you're very much in contention oh, to up. be on the lead card, but that's going to stop it right there. What? Yeah, no. just didn't give it the height I needed for that shot. It's You got to throw up the mountain too, Thomas. Like, <laughs> it's as simple as that. Like You need to give it the height to get up, and Charlie just gives it the height that needs to sneak over that OB line and give him a look at birdie. Yeah, you need the par to secure a spot. We'll see all of the scores, but you need the par to secure the spot on lead card. And this is... And that's all just spectator rope, so to speak. Is, so yeah. you're in bounds, but not a great additional shot. No, it really wasn't. I thought I might have thrown it OB again, but... Sully shows the easy way to play the hole, forehand, forehand, and leaves himself a nice putt, too. Sully been on a heater. I think he's got the last four in a row. Oh, that's going to be out of bounds for Cole, so the struggles continue here. He's going to elect to go from the exact same spot, this yeah. time a much better effort. <laughs> 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 
So here you are trying to close out. The putter was so hot. I think you were five under on the front. Mm -hmm. uh, that just splashes out. That's painful. That is real painful. That is going to end me with a double bogey and actually move myself to four under. Not the finish you're looking to have on the course. Yeah, so that means you went four over in the last three holes. Mm -hmm. And Sullivan going... Five under the last five? Five under the last five. Really impressive stuff. Wow, so showing that anything is possible. Well, hopefully we can have you back tomorrow. Doesn't look like you or Sully will be on our lead card, but looking forward to uh, hopefully working things out where we can have you again. Absolutely, yep. We'll be definitely working my, my best to jump back on lead card final round. Yeah, you've got some work to do, Sully. Also comes in as one of the highest rated guys out here as you tap in. So with that, everyone, like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. I appreciate you guys for being here. Thank you to all of the sponsors, including our presenting sponsor, it's Sun King Dis, along with Discraft and Grip, Andrew Martin, Martin Nice, Ben Wolf, and Clay Harvey, lead card for round number two. We'll see you tomorrow.